In a world where loyalty is rare and betrayal is common, one man's courage becomes the beacon of hope. In the darkest of times, the land of bad is a gripping tale of survival, strategy, and sacrifice. When a mission goes south ways and allies become captives, Kinney must navigate a dangerous. Will he save his team or he die? The movie starts with Sergeant Kinney, a fresh recruit in the elite troops, preparing for his initial task. At that moment, rather than equipping himself with arms like his comrades, Kinney is selecting treats to carry into the fray. His superior, Captain Sugar, reprimands him for not paying attention to the crucial elements. Subsequently, Captain Sugar and his squad assembled for a briefing aboard the aircraft. They were tasked with the extraction of a CIA operative who was covertly embedded in Alexander Petrov's syndicate in the Philippines. The twist is that Petrov was formerly a KGB operative and presently commands a formidable Russian mob, protected by numerous devoted warriors. Accompanied by the field squad, they had Captain Reaper, an adept aviator who could manage assaults from afar. It emerged that Captain Reaper was not merely a pilot, because he was also a smart tactician who could steer the group when they encountered obstacles. Nevertheless, he appeared distressed since his spouse was expecting imminently. While his workmates were noisy in the office and his mobile signal was weak, he became irritated as he eagerly awaited updates from his kin. Concurrently, Captain Sugar and his crew landed in the Philippines for their task. Yet again, Kinney displayed his foolishness by looking for his misplaced treat. This prompted laughter from the veteran soldiers. Shortly thereafter, the aviators confirmed favorable weather, enabling a secure skydive from 15,000 feet. Given that it was Kaney's inaugural task, the experienced members questioned his competence. Thus, he was tasked with the straightforward job of communicating with the drone operator. Nonetheless, Captain Sugar had faith in Kinney and reminded all that every member plays a pivotal role. Once prepared, they exited the aircraft sequentially and descended into the jungle. In the meantime, Reaper and his squad were primed with missiles for support. During the operation, Reaper maintained contact with Kinney for positional updates. Subsequently, the squad advanced warily through the woodland. During the journey, the older team members teased Kinney again for his lack of experience. They considered him an inconvenience, so Kinney felt the need to demonstrate his worth. Nearing the rescue location, one colleague appeared exhausted. At that point, Kinney got guidance from an elder named Bishop, who cautioned him to be ready for surprises during missions. Bishop concluded by naming the battlefield the Accursed Ground, a place where individuals might surrender their decency amid conflict. Shortly after, they ran into mist that hid their sight. In response, Kinney requested Reaper to deploy a drone for reconnaissance. Despite this difficulty, Captain Sugar resolved that they must press on because of the urgent timeline. Venturing into the mist, they mistook a pig for enemy activity. The squad eventually arrived close to Petrov's command center. Without delay, they started to survey the vicinity from various perspectives. Concurrently, Kenny was tasked with logging coordinates to relay to Reaper once his drone was operational. Soon after, Petrov exited his stronghold. Nonetheless, Reaper was frustrated due to his malfunctioning drone. His irritation was compounded by the loudness of his teammates, and he eagerly awaited contact from his spouse. Simultaneously, the group noticed multiple vehicles entering Petrov's domain. These belonged to the Abu Sayyaf faction, a militant group from the Philippines known for exploiting religious pretexts to carry out violent deeds, such as abducting non-natives. This organization is headed by Hashimi, infamous as the most merciless militant chief in the Asia Pacific. His deeds have alarmed the Philippine authorities. Upon Hashimi's arrival, Kinney promptly relayed the coordinates to Reaper, who had just repaired his drone. Meanwhile, Bishop harbored suspicions that Hashimi might be bartering arms with Petrov to bolster his clout. When Petrov was off guard, Hashimi launched a surprise assault, taking the life of Petrov's spouse. Captain Sugar and his squad couldn't merely observe as innocents were at risk, and Hashimi was on the verge of seizing Petrov's offspring. Therefore, Kinney urgently requested Reaper to initiate a missile attack on the militants. Following the bombardment, the unit prepared to storm Petrov's stronghold and accomplish their task. Suddenly, Kinney found himself trapped in a corridor with terrorists approaching. Captain Sugar instructed him to remain still and sent a soldier to confront the attackers. Unfortunately, their communication was severed and Hashimi's forces continued to advance. They began firing in rapid succession, overwhelming Kinney and his comrades. In the turmoil, a team member was lost. The crisis deepened with the arrival of additional terrorists. Shortly thereafter, Captain Sugar commanded a second missile launch. Although it struck the foes effectively, he and Bishop couldn't dodge a rocket-propelled grenade blast and perished immediately. Kinney, now the sole survivor, was engulfed by fear and panic. When Kinney's plight was known, Reaper swiftly prepared a chopper for his rescue. Yet, upon its arrival, Kinney remained motionless, fearful of hidden terrorists. Reaper reassured him of safety and bolstered his morale, affirming his capability to manage the situation. Eventually, Kinney mustered the bravery to move toward the rescue point, a distance of five kilometers. As he navigated a narrow stream, Kinney detected an unusual vehicle. He promptly requested Reaper to survey it with the drone. Reaper verified the occupants as Hashimi's followers, 
prompting Kinney to swiftly conceal himself. Taking cover beneath a toppled tree, Kinney observed two militants on horseback, accompanied by hounds. Reaper then counseled Kinney to keep still, warning that the hounds were attuned to sensing peril. With Reaper's guidance, the hounds eventually left. When it was safe, Reaper directed Kenny to proceed north. To calm Kenny's nerves, Reaper reminisced about their mutual hometown in Ohio. Regrettably, Kenny seldom visits since his father's demise. Upon learning of Kenny's situation, Reaper expressed sympathy and shifted the conversation to uplift him. He recounted an amusing encounter with his former wife while on duty and their shared fondness for the same dishes. Yet, his present spouse has different preferences as she follows a vegan diet. Shortly, Kenny arrived at the evacuation site and the helicopter was set to transport him to the closest military base. However, as he was about to embark, militants launched an assault. The rescue squad had to call off the operation due to peril. Now, Kinney had to confront the adversary solo. Concurrently, Reaper fired another rocket to divert attention, allowing Kinney to counter-strike. Once secure, Kinney reached out to Reaper and requested an alternate extraction location. This instance, he had to ascend as the site was beyond a hill. During their journey, Reaper initiated a fresh dialogue with Kenny, revealing aspects of his history. He described his aspiration to be an aviator, but after facing denial, he opted to pilot drones remotely instead. Kenny sympathized with him, and engrossed in the narrative, tumbled into a stream. By good fortune, he wasn't gravely injured, yet his rifle was lost during the tumble. Two foes noticed him. At that juncture, Kenny had to engage them armed only with a pistol. He succeeded in deceiving them, but erred by exposing his position prematurely. Abruptly, the foes apprehended him, severing his link with Reaper, who was then unable to locate him using drones. Simultaneously, Reaper queried his leaders about persisting with the mission to rescue Kinney. Despite being due to return home to his spouse, Kinney awoke to discover himself bound and undergoing torment at the hands of Hashumi's followers. Concurrently, Reaper and his aide were endeavoring to ascertain Kinney's whereabouts. They pinpointed two distant locales, one in Kalimantan and another in Yemen. Concurrently, an enigmatic figure approached a militant outpost in the woods. Astonishingly, it was Captain Sugar, presumed deceased by all. He promptly overcame two militants who challenged him. Within the stronghold, Captain Sugar discovered Kinney, detained. He disclosed that he and Bishop had outlasted the onslaught, yet Bishop was now a captive of Hashimi's cadre. Captain Sugar sought Kinney's aid to liberate Bishop. Prior to departing, they appropriated all armaments from the outpost. En route, Kinney exhibited a unique talent. He could transmit signals utilizing merely a cell and a water container. Initially, Captain Sugar was doubtful, but Kinney succeeded in reaching Reaper in this manner. Subsequently, Reaper disclosed that the CIA operative they were seeking had been located at Patret's command center. Nevertheless, Kinney was adamant about adhering to Captain Sugar's strategy to first save Bishop. Arriving near Patrat's stronghold, now under the Abu Sayyaf faction's control, Captain Sugar and Kinney observed the vicinity and strategized Bishop's rescue, presuming his detainment there. With just the duo present, Kinney proposed a covert assault, backed by drones operated by Reaper. Conversely, Reaper was tasked with striking three vital locations within the compound to divert attention and facilitate Captain Sugar and Kinney's infiltration of Petrov's stronghold. Admiring Kenny's ingenuity, Captain Sugar commended his grasp of guerrilla warfare. Despite others' doubts, Kenny had demonstrated his competence. With their strategy ready, Kenny reached out to Reaper to synchronize their offensive. However, as Reaper was about to deploy the drone, his superior intervened, announcing a replacement pilot. At that moment, Reaper objected, aware of his duty to the mission, yet his superiors disregarded his protests and escorted him out. Meanwhile, Captain Shiver imparted some urgent codes to Kenny. They infiltrated the stronghold, needing to neutralize the Sentinel swiftly before the new drone operator could initiate a missile strike. Through their collaboration, they overcame Hashimi's forces. Yet Captain Sugar sustained injuries, and they were apprehended. Soon after, they found themselves in a dim cell, enduring severe beatings that left them defenseless. Shortly thereafter, they discovered Bishop was also imprisoned with them. Kinney attempted a ruse, claiming American forces would strike if they weren't freed. However, the adversaries were skeptical as Kinney lacked the means to communicate with the drone operator. Captain Sugar implored Kinney to save Bishop, confident in his abilities to excel in the special forces. In a sudden turn, militants escorted Captain Sugar to Hashimi. It was then that Hashimi executed Captain Sugar, aware of the profound impact it would have on Kinney, given Captain Sugar's unwavering faith in him amidst others' skepticism. As Kinney mourned Captain Sugar's demise, Hashimi's henchmen hauled him out for questioning. They assaulted him severely. Then. Hashimi recounted the jail's origins, constructed by the Japanese during their occupation of the Philippines. After sovereignty, the facility was deserted, and Abu Sayyaf claimed it in 1991. Hashimi menaced Kinney, yet Kinney boldly declared his squad would retaliate with missiles. Enraged, Hashimi struck him and inquired if any comrades remained. Kinney conceded only Bishop was left. Dissatisfied, Hashimi commanded his men to submerge Kinney in a drum. Concurrently, the replacement drone operator, 
unable to locate Kinney, proceeded to launch a missile as intended. Shortly, the prison was blown apart, but Kinney submerged, endured. Kinney located Bishop and stumbled upon another detainee, the very CIA operative they had been seeking. He then aided the CIA agent's escape from the cell, and together they sought out Bishop. However, they encountered Hashimi, who had miraculously survived and was seeking vengeance on Kinney. In a surprising turn of events, Kinney valiantly fought and overcame Hashimi. Bishop, who had previously doubted Kinney's capabilities, was taken aback by his prowess in subduing such a formidable terrorist leader. Kinney, acting swiftly, seized a communication radio to halt the impending assault. Yet, to his dismay, there was no response as everyone was engrossed in a basketball match. Fortuitously, Kinney managed to connect with a soldier who provided him with Reaper's contact details. With a faint connection, Kinney managed to leave a message for Reaper, who hurried back and halted the missile strike in the nick of time. Thanks to Reaper's intervention, Kinney and his companions made a safe getaway. Shortly thereafter, Kinney expressed his gratitude to Reaper via the drone, prompting Reaper to swiftly dispatch a rescue squad for their extraction. Amidst the perilous circumstances faced by the ground team, Reaper was incensed that his peers were absorbed in a basketball match rather than the critical mission at hand. He reproached his chief for neglecting the mission, despite foregoing his personal time, with his wife expecting imminently. His fury erupted, and he shattered the TV at the command center. Meanwhile, Bishop regarded Kinney with respect, having misjudged him, yet Kinney had been his savior. As the movie concludes, Reaper's aide, soon to wed in solitary, requests him to act as her protector and substitute for her deceased father. Upon this, Reaper consents with pleasure, profoundly moving his aide. The movie concludes. This is it for today. I will reconnect with you with another story like this. Until then, this is your host for movie, Recap Vision, signing off. Don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications to catch more videos like this. Thank you for watching.